Massive blast in Iran today, an airstrike in Beirut yesterday, which killed the second in command of Hamas during talks with Hezbollah. The Hezbollah promising a military response. The Red Sea boiling with conflict. Has the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu got his bigger war? This evening, blasts rocked the Iranian city of Kerman. Over 100 people have died. Twin blasts struck near the tomb of the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani. Soleimani was assassinated on the 3rd of January 2020. Today is his fourth death anniversary. Hundreds were walking towards Soleimani's tomb. The blasts hit the procession near the Saheb al Zaman Mosque. The Iranian state broadcaster saying at least 171 people have been injured. Soleimani was one of the most powerful figures in Iran. You would know that already. Who could have possibly struck Iran on such a day? Who could have killed Soleimani's supporters near his tomb on his death anniversary? Well, there are no credible answers yet. No one has claimed responsibility. But suspicion breeds battle in the dangerous fog of war. Tensions are rising sharply once again and in geography much beyond Gaza. The question is, what happens next? West Asia is already in flames. There is fear of an expanding war. There was a strike in Beirut last night. Hamas's deputy commander was killed. Lebanon in, is on alert as well. The Hezbollah have threatened to avenge the attack. They have threatened to hit Israel, even as an anxious world, including Israel's most important ally, America, tries to de-escalate. One leader has been talking repeatedly about continuing this war for at least a year, if not more. Benjamin Netanyahu. Here's something we have been telling you on Gravitas for a while now. The Israeli Prime Minister knows that he cannot survive in office if this conflict ceases or even pauses. Logically, an extended war suits his interest. The war helps Netanyahu stay on in office, an expanding front line all the more. Let me show you. A poll published in the last 48 hours has found that only 15% of the Israelis want Netanyahu to stay in office. 23% of Israelis prefer Benny Gantz as their post-war prime minister. For those not following Israeli politics, Benny Gantz is the leader of the National Unity Party. His popularity does not in any way benefit Bibi. And Bibi is getting more unpopular day by day. He failed to defend Israel from Hamas and he has failed to secure the return of the hostages. What's more, his ambitious judicial overhaul has now been overturned by the Israeli Apex Court. You see, it pours when it rains. And as per this poll, only 15% Israelis now want Netanyahu to remain in office after the war. Last night, Israeli forces struck Beirut, the Lebanese capital. The IDF hit the Hamas deputy leader, Saleh al-Aruri. Netanyahu killed two birds with a stone. You see, he gets to tell Israelis that his government continues to avenge the October 7 Hamas attack. By hitting Beirut, Netanyahu also gets to provoke Hezbollah and intensify the conflict on the Lebanon front. The Lebanon-based terror group has been exchanging fire with Israeli forces since the beginning of the Gaza war. But so far, an all-out war has not broken out in Israel's northern border. Israel has been threatening a ground operation in Lebanon. In December, Israel's war cabinet said the time for a diplomatic solution is running out. It was Benny Gantz who said, and I'm quoting, if the world and the government of Lebanon do not act to stop the fire towards northern communities and to push Hezbollah away from the border, the IDF will do that. Before that, the Israeli military said that its northern command along the Lebanese border is in a quote-unquote state of very high readiness. The IDF's chief of staff said we need to be prepared to strike if required. Hezbollah did not reciprocate to the verbal escalation by declaring war, but now following last night's strike, the group has vowed to avenge Saleh al-Aruri's death. It has called the IDF strike a quote-unquote cowardly assassination operation carried out by the Zionist enemy in a barbaric aggression 
and a heinous crime. Is Netanyahu's plan falling in place? And to what length really is Bibi going to ensure nothing comes in the way of his plan? American press saying the White House was not kept in the loop with regard to the Beirut strike. Now, you should not be surprised. The Joe Biden White House, after all, has been wary that tit-for-tat attacks can escalate into a wider war. In other words, Biden and Bibi's end goals, as far as the war is concerned, are no longer matching. One wants to escalate. Another is buckling under domestic and international pressure and trying to get two sides to talk and agree to a ceasefire. In fact, at one point last night, it looked like a temporary ceasefire could be announced soon. The Arab World News Agency broke the news that Hamas negotiators have waived the condition of a final ceasefire and the withdrawal of IDF soldiers in the ongoing talks for hostage release. In other words, Hamas was open to the release of 40 hostages. In exchange for what, you ask? 120 prisoners and a one-day ceasefire. And few minutes later, news came in of the Beirut strike. This, you see, was Netanyahu fighting his bigger war. But at what cost? Israeli hostages remain in Gaza. Women and children continue to die in Gaza. Benjamin Netanyahu, the world is watching you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.